Questions 106 to 108 in the Acer Green paper. Question 106. As the densities of neon krypton at a standard temperature and pressure are 0.9 kilograms per meter cubed and 3.74 kilograms per meter cubed respectively, then the rate of diffusion of neon is about. So diffusion is equal to one on the square root of the density. So the diffusion rate for neon is going to be one on square root of 0.9. And also the diffusion rate for Krypton is going to be equal to 1 on square root of 3.74. Now we're trying to compare the diffusion rate between neon and Krypton. So uh, Krypton, sorry. So um, what we're essentially saying is trying to find the ratio of the diffusion rate between neon and Krypton. So dn over dk. So this is equal to 1 on square root of 0.9 divided by 1 on square root of 3.74. Now this is equal to 1 on, oh uh, sorry, square root of 3.74 on square root of 0.9, which is equal to square root of 3.74 on 0.9. Um, from here, we can round uh, 3.74 to a more friendly number. Let's round it to um, 3.6 on 0.9. So it's about equal to square root of 4, which is equal to 2. So the reason uh, why I rounded it to 3.6 is because it's um, fairly close to 3.6 and when you divide that by 0.9, you get a nice whole number at the end. So what we're saying here essentially is that the ratio of the diffusion rate of neon to krypton is that um, neon is going to be two times faster than krypton. So therefore the correct answer for 106 is C. Question 107. Effusion is the passing of a gas out through a very small hole in its container. The rate of effusion obeys the same uh, law as the rate of diffusion. However, the rate of effusion is uh, easier to measure as it is inversely proportional to the time taken for a known volume to be released. So what we can say therefore is that effusion is about proportional to 1 on square root d because um, the rate of effusion obeys the same law as the rate of diffusion and it is also proportional to 1 on t, 1 on time. So. What we can therefore say is that um, 1 on square root d is um, equal to 1 on t, t is equal to square root of d. So therefore um, tx, sorry ty is equal to square root of dy and tx is equal to square root of dx. So in question 107, we're, we're told if the time taken to release a certain volume of gas x is tx and the time taken to release the same volume of gas is ty, then the ratio tx on ty is. So um, we know that tx is equal to square root of dx, ty is equal to square root of dy, so therefore tx on ty is going to equal to square root of dx on square root of dy, which is equal to square root square root dx on dy so therefore a is the correct answer for 107 question 108 at a certain temperature and pressure uh, 50 mils of a gas whose molecular formula is unknown took 250 seconds to pass through a small hole under precisely the same conditions 50 mils of argon took 100 seconds to pass through the same hole if the atomic mass of argon is 40, then the molar mass of an unknown gas is. So I've just adapted the previous formula from the previous question to the gases that we have here. So I've left annotated X as our unknown gas and A is argon. So the time it took for argon to pass through the hole is therefore 100 seconds and that's shown here. So pretty simple, you just sort of sub them into uh, the equation. The tough part however is figuring out what to do with the densities because we've been given not the density of uh, argon but the atomic number of argon and we're being asked to figure out the molar mass of the gas so 
um, it helps to know a little bit about Avogadro's law. So Avogadro's law states that for a set uh, temperature and pressure, uh, a set volume of gas will always have the same number of molecules. So what we're essentially saying is that, so we've been given 50 mils of an unknown gas and also 50 mils of argon. And it just so happens that the um, pressure and temperature that these two gases exist in is the same. So what we can essentially say is that the number of molecules of each gas um, within each 50 mil volume is going to be the same. So the mass of gas in the set 50 mil volume is going to be equal to um, the number of moles times the molar mass. But since we know that uh, the number of moles is the same between each of these gases, as we've only got 50 mils and due to Avogadro's law, etc., we can therefore say that the mass of gas is going to be proportional to the molar mass of each of these gases. The density is also proportional to, uh, so is usually equal to the mass over volume. But since the, again, the volume is fixed, therefore we can say that the density is proportional to the mass. So overall, using these two facts, we can say that the density is therefore proportional to the molar mass. So in this case, what we then get is 250 on 100 is equal to square root of dx, so the density, sorry, square root of um, mx, the molar mass of the unknown gas, over the um, ma molar mass of the argon and in this case what we get is square root of mx on 40. So 250 on 100 is equal to 2.5 2.5 squared is equal to 6.25 and uh, I'd, you can either know that off the top of your head or just do a little bit long a long multiplication. Then you get mx on 40. Therefore, the molar mass of the unknown gas is going to be equal to 6.25 times 40, which is 250. So therefore, the correct answer for 108 is D.